Hey guys, it's Legacy Brick Studios coming in with a brand new Star Wars Rebels recap. And in this episode, we are going to be looking at the episode Fighter Flight. Fighter Flight. Say that 10 times fast. Um, it's hard to do, but I'm just going to dive right into this episode. It's not going to be like last week's. It's going to be more like the week before last, in which I just kind of talked about the episode and said what I. I thought my opinion was on it so starting off we have Ezra and he is trying to work his Jedi powers by using the force to move this bull and we see it start to levitate but then we realize it's just Chopper doing that and Ezra is kind of ticked off about it so Chopper runs away and Ezra chases him down the hallway which where he meets Sabine actually and he, he kind of has a little love interest with her and he starts hitting on her but we also get to see her room and what it looks like we see a no stormtroopers symbol sign thing that she's painted on the wall and uh you know her armor just looks great i love the fact that she has a wolf on her uh shoulder right there it looks great i love it and i even heard from somewhere that her armor is going to change throughout the series she's going to get more and more new looking armor and that is a great idea and i love it um, I just hope we do get to see more of Sabine's room because it's not very much and I'm wondering what she is painted considering um, in a minute we see something else that she's painted but here we have Ezra and Zeb going at it again because Chopper goes into uh, Zeb's room to hide from Ezra and ends up zapping Zeb with this little laser bolt type deal and he gets all mad and him and Ezra start acting like uh, brothers and just fighting with each other and bickering back and forth until Ezra gets on his bunk of the bed, the top bunk, and it collapses down on Zeb due to Chopper pulling the bolt out from it, which is kind of comical. I'm glad they threw that in there. It's, it's pretty cool. But uh, we also soon get a look at what I said before. We look and we see this very quickly this image of what is in Sabine's room is painted on her wall and it's actually a picture of Cad Bane and Embo. Now let's think for a moment why did Sabine paint these two characters that we um, grew to love within Star Wars The Clone Wars? How does she know them? Um, my theory is that we are going to see these characters in the show sometime I think it's great that they're throwing these little Easter eggs in there, and I hope that we do get to see them just because, like, the characters know of them. Uh, they're bounty hunters that should be. Ha should have notary throughout the galaxy, I should say. Um, but yeah, I love it. It's awesome. I love the way she painted Bane's head with, like, smoke coming out of it, and then she put a heart around Embo. It's very interesting graffiti art from her perspective, and we're gonna get into that later in this episode as well, but Ezra and Zeb continue to fight, uh, and Zeb jumps off the balcony at Ezra, and they're laying on the ground, but Hera walks in the door and is like, no, I think I think we need to do something here. So she decides to send them on a mission, a wild Melu run mission, basically a shopping list, and she also wants them to find this fruit. But the thing is this Melu run food basically the thing is it, it's not f from the planet. They would have to get it from an outside vendor, which is very improbable to do on Lothal. And Melu Run, here's a fun fact, it actually was first introduced, you, you first heard of it in this novel called X-Wing Wedges Gamble. Um, I thought that was a little neat nod to that comic book. Very interesting that they threw that in there. But uh, we see Eb and Zebra. <laughs> Eb and Zebra. <laughs> oh, I got their names mixed up. Oh, well. Eb and Zebra. No. Oh lord, it's been a long day guys. We see Ezra and Zeb walking to the marketplace and I love that little uh, look that they give it. The animation crew has done a fabulous job with this episode guys as they always do and will do throughout the series. 
and uh, here's some concepts of the marketplace actually uh, done by different designers different vendors you see the fruits and stuff it looks great I always love how we actually get to see this concept art afterwards and you know that's a nice thing to do but Ezra meets this family friend that his parents used to know and that he grew up with probably and um, he asks him where he could get some Melu run and he tells him that basically you're not going to get it on this planet so he Ezra goes back to Zeb and they kind of are discussing what they're going to do and they have a little conversation about it but I thought I'd throw this in here too here is a concept art of the shopping list that Hera actually gives them and we see some pretty interesting items y you can read it down the list I'm not gonna read them all but that's basically them it's interesting how the creators of this episode even the concept designers they th throw that really cool Arabish writing in there and it actually means something other than just symbols and stuff but um, Eventually, the Empire, the Imperials, walk up to the the vendor Ezra knew, and they talk about buying his farm. And if you if you don't want to buy something, if you don't want to sell something to the Empire, well, it has some later impacts on you from different perspectives. But here's some more Yogsar Least concept art, and that's his name of this Imperial Yogsar Least. Or lice, torn of the other, but I here's another imperial. Uh, I think it's the Oaksar, at least I'm not sure, but we'll see him later in the episode if not. But I found it very interesting that they were actually going to use the prime minister from the the last episode in Yogsar at least in his position. So I found that very interesting. A little fun fact there, and here we have Ezra and Zeb going to steal the Melu runs from the Imperials who had bought it from an outside vendor and they they see that so they are in the Imperial tra Imperial troop transport excuse me but um they end up going after those and that's I guess that's how they um, transport their stuff around the planet maybe their weapons their foods and whatnot that's what they use this troop transport and I've I love the fact that they are using an old Hasbro toy not Hasbro Kenner toy off of it that's awesome but Kenner is actually making a toy from it and I also hear that it's not very good from what I've heard but here we have some actual concepts from it um, by the creators of the show interesting how it looks I always love looking at this because I kind of want to be a concept artist someday guys if you haven't known that but that's kind of my dream job just it'd be really cool I love art and I love Star Wars and making movies and all that but so Ezra and Zeb are going after this uh, Melu run and Zeb teases Zeb, Ezra and he's like use the force just use the force you Jedi and so Ezra does and the top of the crate actually starts shaking around and then a stormtrooper kind of just shuts it and I thought that's kind of comedic I had a little laugh at it but Ezra ends up getting all flustered and he climbs up on the troop transport and he just steals one but the Imperials notice him and Zeb throws all their equipment and at the stormtroopers and saves Ezra and then they run down the street with the stormtroopers on their tails and Zeb climbs this building and the stormtroopers are shooting at him so they go after Ezra who's actually on the top of the buildings now he's running the rooftops trying to get away but Zeb on the other hand he finds this TIE fighter and we actually see this pilot we've seen before in some of the shorts before the Spark of Rebellion movie actually aired. Uh, one was called Property of Ezra Bridger, another one was called Entanglement with Zeb, and we see this pilot multiple times, and I find it funny that he always has the short end of the stick when it comes to these rebels, 
but uh, here is a picture of him again. I, very fun to draw, probably, if you like that. That's what I usually use these types of pictures for. Just kind of drawing it out and having a, a fun time. Because I'm, a, I love art. That's just me. But here we have Zeb being kind of cornered. He doesn't really have a choice of what to do. So as the Tie Fighter flies around him, it doesn't shoot him yet. But he has enough time to jump up on it and get on the top and open it up and throw the guy out and take over the Tie Fighter and shoot the stormtroopers which I'm not sure they survive guys they probably are dead I'm just breaking that to you right now but he flies off after Ezra and while Ezra is being chased by the stormtroopers Zeb um, he makes this comment like we're even right because uh, Ezra saved his life from the from Agent Callus and th they kinda have that satire throughout this episode if that's what you want to call it so Zeb lets Ezra in after he admits that okay we're even and they fly off but they end up crashing actually a little bit not like crashing crashing but almost running into a vendor but they get all this stuff on the front of the tie fire all this fruit and they can't see out of it and as they're flying down the the plains of Lothal, they almost crash into one of the big rocks. They're actually minerals, is what they are. I, I found that out. That's what they're used for, they're minerals. So they almost crash into one of them, but Ezra's like, wait, we need to do something. He, he feels something's wrong with the force, and right before they hit it, he turns right, and they miss it. Um... But it's just cool seeing Ezra's usage of the Force throughout these episodes now. And I can't wait to see where it goes, honestly, guys. It's, it's going to be a great series. So they contact Kanan and Hera. And at that, at that point, Kanan is actually using the Dejaric or Dejaric table. I don't know what it's called, guys. I'm going to call it the Dejaric table. It's like what the chess game is, basically, in Star Wars. They have it on the Millennium Falcon. Um, I'm not entirely happy that they actually have that. I'm sorry, guys. It's too much usage of the original trilogy. It's just too much, guys. I'm sorry. But him and Chopper are playing, and he ends up beating Chopper, and Chopper gets all mad and, and goes away. But I loved the animation with it, though. It was perfect. It was on point. It reminded you of the original trilogy. Like I said, almost too much though. But, you know, they would have been using, back in the day, claymations almost to make this work. And then, I don't know how they did it exactly on the show, but that's how they did it in the old days. And I think they kept that in mind when doing this and they made it work. They made it awesome. I, I have no idea how the guys did it, but they pulled it off great. And so Hera walks over, and they get a call from Zeb and Ezra. And they learn that they stole a TIE fighter. And we have a little comedic scene where Ezra, well, Kanan tells them that they better have disabled the tracking beacon or something like that. And Ezra is pulling out the wires. And it's just a hilarious moment, actually, guys. Uh, even my the, the people that I was watching it with, my friends, they laughed during it too. And it was it was a good moment. It was a good moment, guys. But um, you need those comedic scenes when dealing with some harder themes in the show, like this. Um, the Imperials decide to go to the farm that Ezra's friends own and they inst instead of purchasing from it well they're just gonna blow it up and it's theirs now and we're taking you as prisoner that's what happens when you don't give the empire what they want so here is some concepts of his family friend um, and his I guess wife I don't know it might be his daughter you can't really tell with this episode guys but 
that's what happens and Yogsar at least takes them as prisoner in the Imperial Troop Transport. And it, it's kind of weird the way they imprison these people in the, in the Troop Transport. I'm not entirely happy with it, but I mean it's a nice nod to the episode and we we come to believe that this is what happened to Owen and Baru's farm except they pretty much vaporized them. Not vaporized, but burnt them to a crisp. Uh, this is what happened at the Owen and Baru homestead on Tatooine. That's, that's what we come to believe happened. And that's how they attacked the Sandcrawler as well, we, we, uh, we think. So, that's a nice nod to the original trilogy, I believe. But here's a nice concept art picture of them leaving their homestead in the farm and taking them away as the sun sets. So Ezra and Zeb discover what has happened, they see the smoke from the TIE fighter and they decide to go after them. And Zeb opens the hatch, he lets, he, he communicates with them and it's, it's another one of those funny moments where Zeb says, oh, it's Commander Melu Run, and Ezra's like, really, Melu Run, you, you, would, you would use that? And it's just a funny moment, but Ezra drops down on the troop transport, and he can't reach the button to let them free, so what happens is um, he uses the force to touch the button and release the prisoners and save the day. And it's really nice to see how he uses the force. He doesn't really know how to use it yet. He's still learning. But when he needs it most, that's when it comes to him. That's when he, he learns how to use it. But I love how they're introducing that in the show. And in the next episode, we're going to see a lot more of that. But we have the troop transport pilots, which are different than the ATDP pilots. And uh, it's just cool to see how we have troop variants now. It's great to see. I love how they're introducing different types of troops with different armor. It's awesome. I love it. But Ezra fights on top of the troop transport. He learns that this is actually the same one that had the Melu run that he was trying to find from the past scene in the marketplace. And he throws them at the stormtroopers. He beats them up and one of the stormtroopers gets real close to him and he almost shoots him and he's like wait you did this all for fruit and it's just like yep so um somehow zeb ends up saving the day by shooting all the stormtroopers off the troop transport and he flies in this acrobatic way with the TIE fighter upside down and scoops up Ezra while flying the TIE with his feet and it's a great moment but also after that Zeb I think it was after this I, I might have the chronology mixed up but because I'm not watching the episode like I did in the last video but he gives Ezra the helmet that was actually in the fighter when he when he found it from the pilot and he gives it to Ezra and he's like you collect these right and Ezra's like yeah but I already have this one no thanks and Zeb kinda gets his puppy dog eyes on and feels sad you can tell and Ezra's like well but this one's better and he might have Sabine paint it or something which is really cool um, that she's gonna start pa painting the armor and it's great to see that but they return home to the ghost and they give Hera her Melu run and Kanan asks well where's the TIE fighter and they oh we crashed it we crashed it don't worry about it but we we kinda know they laugh after it we kinda know and have the idea that well they didn't crash it it's somewhere else but we haven't learned yet where exactly it is which is very interesting uh, but we might have some clues to that in a minute but they go on the ship and Sabine shows them her work of art because in the in the beginning of the episode 
Ezra tells her that he can be her inspiration, wink wink, you know what I mean, and uh, kind of hitting on her too. So she makes this picture of Ezra crashing on Zeb. I hate this. I'm sorry guys, I do not like this. I am, I am, I am not happy that they went to this level. You know, it's funny for kids, funny for family, but this is not what art I want to see in my Star Wars. I am sorry guys. This graffiti art needs to change. It needs to change. I am not happy with this. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Killian Plunkett. You do fabulous work on the show. You do fabulous work, but this is not your best. This is not your best. You can do better. I am sorry. This needs to change. I don't like it. End of story. Sabine, you're a better artist. You can do better work than this. Do it. Don't give us this crap artwork. I love it. Um, I do not like the artwork, though. I do not. But they're like, oh, this makes us look like fools. You suck. And then this is all Chopper's fault, and they chase him. But Zeb and Ezra, by the end of this show, you you learn to see that they have gotten closer. It's, they're pretty much brothers, actually, um, if you think about it. But, you know, you might say that Ezra might be like the little cousin that shows up on the show or something. But... You know, they do grow close, and it's nice to see the character development, and I always love seeing that. But, if you are wondering where that TIE Fighter went, here might be a clue. This might be a clue for you guys. We see this concept art of Lothal. Lothal. Right? Okay. But we see this TIE Fighter in the middle of these minerals. Hmm. Hint, hint. Maybe they'll use that for something later. Who knows? But... Or maybe they, they gave it to the family that they rescued. You never know what happened to it. We don't know yet, but I think we will learn it sometime in the future. I don't know when, nobody knows, but I think we will. So guys, that wraps up this episode. It's been a great time making this though, guys, and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like down below and give me a comment telling me that you liked it, you didn't like it, why, why not. I want to hear your feedback guys and I always take that into consideration and get back to you actually I'll always comment on your comments comment on your comments no I, I reply to your comments guys but subscribe for more if you like this series and I like making it so I hope you like it so I'll see you in the next episode which is rise of the old masters premiering Monday night only on Disney XD nine o'clock I'll see you guys.